Again, the season comparison from last year, stolen base attempts per game was 0.68 last year per game, 0.9 now. That's a big difference. Stolen base percentage, that's the success rate. That's significant, 75 to 79 percent. So more steals and at a higher success rate. Batting average for balls in play, that's BABIP. Uh, we'll get into that with the shift restrictions. That's a big change, 290 to 297. Biggest change, obviously, is time of game. We've addressed it many times, but from three-hour game, that's a nine-inning game, to two hours, 37 minutes. It's a seismic change, but maybe mainly on the outliers, the really short and the really long games. The really long games are kind of gone, which is a good thing. Ben Clements of Fangraphs is back with us right now. Ben, I know you get into the nitty-gritty in your piece, so why don't you tell people how much are stolen bases affecting the run scoring of the game this year? So if you want the number, it's 0 .03 stolen base, 0 .03 runs per game extra this year as compared to last year from steals. So a run every 30 games for your team, it's very low, which I actually think is quite enjoyable. I, I don't need stolen bases to be completely changing the game. Right. They've changed how it looks without changing the scoring. Right. So, all right, what's the optimal then? If it, you say it's, it's up slightly, right, which is kind of what you want, or do we want more run stealing? I don't know, more, you know, stolen bases... Um, kind of dead ball style or Maury Will style. What do you think? I, I, I could stand with more. I, I really like steals. And when I watch baseball with my friends and family who are less big of baseball fans than I am, they love the steals. So yeah. I, I think they could, they could stand more. And I think what you said in, at the top of the show is completely right, that there will be more. That teams, teams know if you're successful this frequently, you're not stealing enough. Right. Right. Uh, ben, what is the effect of shift restrictions this year? It's not zero, but it's not that far away from zero. Uh, I saw a chart that you guys are running uh, coming out of break there of the BABIP on ground balls by lefties. And that's really what we all think of as the shift, right? You put on the Ted Williams over shift. The lefties can't get a hit on the ground. They just can't buy it. And well, look at this chart. Like, it hasn't changed. They, they still can't buy a hit on grounders. And that's because, look, you can restrict the shift, but you can't restrict somebody standing behind second base. Uh, ben, I would say, though, 226 to 236 in one year. Now, I know it's not vastly different from earlier, but the, we were sh the game was shifting much more over the last five years. Isn't 226 to 236 a significant change? Oh, that's definitely meaningful. And I'm glad they did it because, like, I'm glad they are going to stop this from going further than it did. But I don't think it's changed how baseball looks that much. You know, a few extra mm -hmm. singles on grounders over every few games for lefties. And I think that's for the better. Like, I wouldn't want it to suddenly be 280, 290 on these grounders. Right. And it hasn't affected righties at all. I think, I think this is good. Like, I, I don't think it would have mattered that much if they kept the shift going, but they've made a cosmetic improvement. I no, haven't really changed the game. Yeah, no, Ben, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think you're saying the same thing I, I'm thinking. I wish they just left that alone. It's a separate issue, and yet it is kind of aesthetically pleasing. I have to admit it's yeah. better. Uh, I, I don't like that it's better, but it is better. That's the way it is. All right, pitch timer violations. You get into this because we haven't gotten into this. How much has that affected the game? Because, you know, you get a ball here or a strike there. It can affect things. What have you found? Yeah, this was one of my big concerns with the pitch timer, and what I found is that it just doesn't matter. So I looked at the pitcher who has the most violations, and that's Joe Musgrove. My guess is it's because he had an abbreviated uh, spring training. You know, he's been hurt. He's come back, didn't have as much time to adjust to it. I think it's cost him 0 .06 points of ERA. So hmm. none of us can perceive 0 .06 points of ERA. That's nothing. Okay. And so, yeah, not, as, not significant. Yeah, it's just not significant. Like, okay. the team good. who has had the most... Yeah of this go against them is one run this year. Right. You know, again, I, you can get into the weeds on this. I remember one specific issue is where uh, Yuli Gurriel got into the box a little late. Suddenly, Alexis Diaz was pitching to him. It was a, the game was on the line, ninth inning, and suddenly it was 0-1 instead of 0-0. So it feels huge. It is big in that moment. You're just saying league-wide, it's not huge. Exactly. And it kind of comes out in the wash. Teams have had that happen to them both ways. So it's these mm -hmm. rare, big things, but they kind of offset, and they're rare. All right, so Ben, now I want you to like clear your head here. I know you've written about it, but I'm, I'm, it's funny. I, this is wonky. I'm having issues with OPS Plus and Weighted Runs Created Plus this year. I know you wrote about this, but I wrote an essay on Joey Gallo. At one point, he was top 20 in OPS Plus, and I'm thinking, 
This guy's not top 20, like the top 20 hitter that OPS Plus makes him out to be. And yet there he is, actually in the top 20. Then I did Juan Soto and Freddie Freeman at one point. We're both at 160 in weighted runs created plus, or OPS Plus. And here are the numbers. Here's the slash line, right? The plate appearance is slightly different, but the aver batting average is where it's at. Freddie was at 3 333. Juan Soto is at 261. The on base is better for Soto. He walks more. The OPS yeah. Plus is the same. Are they the same hitter? So, uh, I'll tell you this. I think OPS Plus is pretty good, but it stops short of what you really need to do because it, it gets a little bit goofy at extreme shapes, like you're showing there, mm -hmm. where one person is... So, when you're on base and slugging are kind of similar to each other, it works quite well. But when you've got a guy like Soto or a guy like Gallo, they're kind of the opposite corners, right? Like, Soto has pretty high on base percentage. Gallo gets a lot of his value from the slug. When you have like extremes on one or the other where they're like very high on base for their OPS plus or very high slug for their OPS plus, it doesn't work quite as well. And I'm with you as well that like, like it's just not, it's a nice one number if you have it, but it's not a sufficient way of describing a hitter. Right. And I, I think that like weighted runs created plus can do a little bit better job because it puts things into context a bit more as in it doesn't treat a walk as the same as a single, which OPS plus does on the on-base side. I guess it doesn't on the slug side, but it just actually values each event a little bit closer to what actually happens. Mm. Uh, I would basically say, as I found in there, batting average on its, like batting average as a statistic is not particularly useful, but getting a lot of hits is obviously very useful. Like it, it pushes your slugging percentage up and your on-base percentage up. And those are the things that, constitute the make up all of the stats we use so if you already know a guy's on base and slug his batting average isn't going to tell you a ton useful because right. like his slugging percentage has those hits in it but it, it's hits per at bat you know like it just gives you extra credit for the extra bases and a guy who's hitting a ton of doubles and walking a lot is really valuable right I mean, freddie freeman kind of fits into that too like he hits a lot of singles as well but the doubles really add up and i think that's kind of why I like slugging percentage over batting average a lot. And, you know, that OPS plus graph you had up there really showed it. Freeman gets a lot of his value from the slug side of things. Right. Because, and that matters. I, I think that if you look at batting average, you kind of hide that. And we really need to know that. Right. We really need to know the extra bases. You, you know what? I think, Ben, it really just, it points out as, you know, you can get to the advanced stats. And then once you're there, you realize... Yeah, you're not quite there. You're never quite there to figuring out everything that's happening physically in life or on a baseball field. You can, you can get close to it, but you're not. We can agree on it, and then you're still not quite there. All right, I wanted your opinion on that because I found myself going, that doesn't make sense, which I guess, yeah. you know, is good since we're inquiring all the time. Ben Clemens of Fangrass, you can get in-depth. He's got two pieces on these very issues uh, up there on Fangrass right now. Ben, great having you on the show. Thank you so much.